Water power swallowing, water bottle, don't bother with it. Politicians, politics flowing like it's bottomless. Started it and finished it, water needed to swim in it. More valuable than oil, be careful homie, you spilling it. Welcome, welcome. We are back again, beloved community, with yet another installment of the People's Water Board Coalition's Water Wednesdays webcast. As always, I'm here with my beloved co-host, Valerie Jean. Hi, everyone. Can't forget our behind-the-scenes tech person, Miss Angelica, who does a marvelous job. And today, we have the pleasure of someone that's near and dear to my heart. Um... He was one of my mentors. He probably didn't even know that. Um, he's an awesome advocate and organizer. He is currently the Savannah, Georgia Harambe House delegate that went to the COP28 conference. And he's here today to tell us all about that and what's going on. And since it's a short show, I'm going to turn it over to Val, who has the first question, so we can jump right in. And I'm so happy to have you here, Baba Daryl Jordan. What's up? What's up? Good Thank to be you. here. All so right. glad that you're here. Thank you. Um, it was over the holidays. It was a little hard to get us recorded. So I'm glad that we uh, we got to do it today because it's really important that people understand what went down went went down on the ground in Dubai um, at COP28. Uh, so thank you so much. All right. All right. So the first of all, we wanted to, not everybody knows what uh, the COP conference is. So it's actually, I had to look it up because I've been saying it for years and I wasn't sure exactly what it stood, what it is. Can you tell our listeners what the conference of the parties, 28, COP 28 is and why you went? We'll start there so that there's a basis of that. Yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, hello to everybody. You know, I'm really glad to be here to hang out with Valerie and to Nicole, uh, but I'll behave myself today. Let me tell you something. <laughs> uh, COP28 was an amazing uh, trip, even though uh, it wasn't something that was on my to-do list, you know, to go to Dubai. Uh, but uh, to go to Dubai, you should understand first thing that the UN, uh, which is... Uh, connected with all the countries almost that we can think of. Uh, they do different things to try to get us to think about what we need to do to make life better. But uh, the COP28 is dealing with environment and climate change. Uh, and it's been doing it for 28 different years now. But at the same time, it's a lot like our organizing that we do locally. And I'm just saying that so folks will get a sense of what I'm talking about. Uh, Y'all know locally when we organize around water and when we organize around the environment and stuff, we have a whole lot to do to both educate the regular folks in the community and to get along and to make changes when we have to debate and work with uh, the elected officials and uh, and the corporations. Mm -hmm. And so first thing I want to tell you is that COP is a good idea to bring people all around the world together to talk to each other, to learn from each other or whatever. But just like locally, uh, when we came together at COP28, uh, and I know that most, a lot of the folks who really know me know that I can talk a whole bunch of junk and a whole lot of crazy stuff. But I want to share something that was said by Al Gore. Okay. Al Gore was over there. And for those of you who remember Al Gore, former vice president of the United States, he was always into environment, you know? <laughs> and so he came over there, but he was really upset over there. And he was upset not because of the people who came, you know, the folks like me and you and all of us. He was more concerned about corporations and uh, representatives from the countries that came there, you know? Uh -huh. Because uh, this I mean year, one of the biggest things that we needed to talk about was trying to shut down fossil you know, getting the fossil stuff out the ground, you know? Right. Shut down uh, the whole then, infrastructure. Yep, yep, because it's having such impact on the on on the future of the earth that we trying to survive on and be here so that our children, grandchildren, and great, 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 great grandchildren in the future can be here and live a good life. Right. But uh, uh one of the things that he talked about was that uh that the corporations and our uh, representatives from our, especially the major Western countries and stuff, 
like uh, the US. They were not they were not supporting that, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, and so they were really good at uh, public relations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we should know about public relations now over here in the U.S. now. I don't know about you all, but during the holidays, folks, would, if you looked at the news and stuff, a lot of the stuff came on the news and you knew that they left out a whole lot of the truth. Yeah. You know, especially if we're talking about war and talking about some of the other things. Well, mm -hmm. over there, we were dealing with the same situation. Yeah. So they talked really good. But you had to really think about what they were saying. And then when you did, you'd understand that they were not necessarily supporting the same issues that we were trying to support. Mm -hmm. You know, Like keep fossil fuels in the ground. No yep, more fossil yep, yep. fuel. We can't build fossil fuel infrastructure. Winona LaDuc said, the party's over. The company, the corporations <laughs> know the party's over. We can't, we have to move in a different direction yeah. uh, for all yeah. of us. And I, you know, when she said that, it made so much sense. Like the corporations know, but they're mm -hmm. gonna they're gonna go as far as they can. They're gonna ride this thing till the wheels fall off. And Sam, and we were, they we have were the in Dubai to do it right. Mm -hmm. And we were in Dubai, and Dubai, the Emirates, uh, that is one of the richest places on the earth to mm -hmm. go to. Mm -hmm. And so when you think of that, and you think of one of the major things that give them their richness. Uh, their their big money is uh, uh, oil in the ground and yep. uh, and gasoline and all that other kind of stuff. Then you began to understand that while uh, uh, the uh, setting up of the conference was really amazing in terms of going to the uh, uh, different uh, different uh, buildings where they had uh, 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 exhibitions and discussions and all that other kind of stuff, it was really amazing. But when you got to the folks who really had to decide on what was going to come out of that, then the corporations and the folks from the United States, even though Al Gore was over there as a rep from the United States, he couldn't really speak for our government because our government is down with with the rest of those folks uh, who want to want to keep getting that money from them corporations over yeah. here in the U.S. who give that money to our politicians so they know to be quiet. And don't yeah. say nothing. I will, I'll act like that's something's right. happening when it's not. And so that's, right. that, that's a big issue. And we need to figure out how we can continue to organize, not with each other, but with everybody around the world that uh, grassroots and, and citizens and residents are the places that they live so that we can all deal with the same same problem that we all dealing with, yeah. you know? And that's that we're losing the earth that we live on, you know, it's not yeah. like, uh, not like we can it's jump a global in a car. situation. Yep, it's not like we can go to another planet. You know, we got the Absolutely. same business. Yep. Mm -hmm. Although you think you let the rich, rich guys like Elon Musk and them, like, we, oh I, yeah, we'll just we'll we'll get off this planet. We'll I'll make us a, a spaceship and shit. No, no, this yeah. is not. We, this, we if we can if we get enough resources to go to a different planet we got enough resources to fix the one that we've ruined Absolutely. It. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. and we learn a lot from each other you know sometimes yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh we might be very different from different people but when you began to interact and run into uh folks from the middle east and folks from africa and asia and other places uh it might take a little bit to uh, talk to each other but then you'll find out that some of the major issues we all have concerns about, you it's know, all this, yes, yep. yes, water, water all over the world. We dealing with the same issues, uh, both the uh, problem uh, with the people that control the water that sometimes doesn't make it available for the people who need water, you yeah. know, in our communities and in our countries and stuff. And the other thing has to do with the, uh, the, what's happening to the water all over the world. The same thing is happening. And that's that we get so much trash and plastics and other kinds of stuff that sometimes when people don't have, don't know what they can do with it, you know, they'll give it to, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll just make a mess, you know? And so what, what we have happening is that all that plastic is in the water all over the world. And I went to one exhibition and uh, y'all gonna think I'm crazy because y'all know I like my meat and stuff, but I haven't mm -hmm. had any meat to eat in over three weeks and stuff, almost a month. Because I wow. went to an exhibition over there at COP28 
and I was watching it, and they were showing us that in all these uh, waters, lakes, rivers, everything, all that plastic is there. And so a lot of our uh, sea animals, uh, uh, whether we're talking about sharks or whether we're talking about the fish that we eat, uh, you know, I don't want to start talk, naming the fish because then I'll get hungry and want to eat me some meat. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it becomes really crazy because you find out that they eat that plastic and stuff in the water and stuff. Yes. And so that those of us that are eating that, uh, you know, I used to think that it was really crazy when I when I around traveling around the country uh, to different stuff. And I ran into these farmers that was really uh, a little different because they had those uh, uh, lakes that they had built in their uh, yards and, and, and you know, and then they, they would have it full with water and they'd be uh, raising uh, fish. And I yeah. thought that was really interesting, but I didn't understand it until yeah. uh, this past visit. Want to understand when where I saw what was from. happening to all those fish and stuff. And then I was saying, oh my God, that's something really that we need to better understand. And that's one of the reasons we got to really push people to spend the money to clean up our waters. Yeah. And, and, and to figure out what kinds of strategies we can do so that folks just don't start trashing all that plastic. And I know it sounds really crazy, but, you know, I also wonder if we can go backwards sometimes. You know, sometimes we got to go back in history to do better, you know. Yeah. And maybe we need to be using more glass again, you know, glass yeah. bottles ah. and glass everything, even yeah. though we had to clean up stuff, wash them out and clean it up rather than just throw it in the trash and keep going and stuff. Yeah. I hope yeah, that makes some sense to y'all because it, it really messed me up. But Daryl, what I'd like to know is were there any important takeaways that you got from the conference and what some of the things that you learned that were new while you were there? Well, I wish I could say I learned a lot of new stuff. But uh, uh, what what I did learn most about is that the same kind of uh, challenges and struggles that we're dealing with here, everybody around the world in their countries are dealing with the same thing. And I want to say this, uh, uh, whether we're talking about uh, capitalist countries, uh, socialist countries, uh, 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 whatever, everybody's got a big challenge to deal with. And unfortunately, uh, we aren't using the resources uh, that folks get to really make changes toward the future. You know, a lot of the corporations and a lot of the companies, no matter what country they're in, they're trying to uh, get the resources so they can keep on doing what they're doing rather than taking some of the resources that they're getting and use that to change how they do things yeah. so, so that we can stop uh, uh, doing the things that we're doing that's having some serious impact on the earth that we're trying to live on and the water that we're trying to drink and the air that we're trying to breathe. And, you know, and the other thing is that uh, uh, something that all of us over here understand, but we don't get to see much. But when I was over there interacting with uh, young folks, especially from Africa, because the uh, 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 Harambe, uh, Harambe House uh, down there, we were partnering with the HBCU Green Fund. And the oh, HBCU God. Green Fund, uh, they they uh, give scholarships to African students from different countries in Africa and bring them to the U.S. to go to HBCU school. Okay. And then our kids over here, African-Americans who are in HBCU schools, those that volunteer and work with HBCU Green Fund, they get an opportunity to travel to the countries that we're working with and partnering with in Africa. A couple of groups just went uh, during the Christmas holidays. And see, they get to go over there and see how those folks are living and learn about how they're uh, operating, Trust organizing, so and trying to make some changes about how they do work, you know, to make the water better for themselves or to figure out what they need to do uh, to get, try to get the air to change or to do different kinds of things that they need to do. And so... Uh, that's we've got to get better so that we understand that just because we're working on water and the environment, that we've got to organize with everybody who's trying to organize to make things better. Whether they're uh, working on black liberation, working on peace, working on uh, whatever they got, but we've got to start working together. Because when we start talking about water and the environment and climate change, then no matter what it is that we care about, or no matter what's impacting us, if we're not working on those things, 
then we ain't gonna have the kind of future that we hoping that we're gonna have, you know? And so uh, yeah. learning how to interact with different folks was absolutely amazing. And that's so, wonderful. That's really great yeah. that that's happening. It makes me feel so hopeful for the future that, you know, because we do, we have to be in community with each other to mm -hmm. understand each other, to open our hearts to each other, to feel empathy for each other. So having that facilitated and and be in and, and children and teenagers being able to or college students being able to go and and see how each other lived, that those connections seem like they're, they really do uh, create a lot of hope, mm -hmm. and, and so important. And it can, it builds connections and and like lifelong camaraderie, and I think that's a positive. That's it. And it also mm -hmm. lets them know that they're not alone, that it's not just something that affects them, it affects people across this world. Yeah. Recently we've been, uh, we have um, did Water Wednesday recordings with um, a couple of folks from Africa that talk about, you know, the, the and they're water warriors to the bone, you can tell, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, that talk about the privatization and how, um, and, and how their, their water's being taken over by corporations and stuff. And it actually mirrored, and I do mean mirrored what Detroit has gone through and what mm -hmm. folks in Michigan have gone through. So when you say that, um, that we're all dealing with the same stuff, absolutely we are. Um, mm -hmm. You can go back a few Water Wednesdays ago and see that, right? Yeah, um, we made those to those connections, so it's so important. Daryl, what was there? Were there any specific conversations that went on around water, and was there any stark like things that you learned about water? Like, I know that when we were talking, you said that uh, that everybody everybody was worried about water. That water is the underlying like kind of uh, thing when we uh, when we talked. Uh, a couple of days ago. You want to kind of touch on that? Yes. Uh, I can say that the same issues, just like you just said out your mouth, the same issues that we were dealing with here in Detroit, uh, mm -hmm. because Detroit owned the water system. And so back in the day when Coleman Young became the mayor, then we was just too black. And all the uh, suburbans uh, uh, areas started fighting us. And then that was Brooks Patterson, and he was the leader. And they fought us for 15 or more years in order to take control over help making decisions about the water here. And when we started talking about uh, our water uh, in Africa and in Asia and in India and other places, we got the same problems, you know, uh, that the people want better water and other kinds of stuff, but the government... Uh, and the uh, corporations that want to uh, take take uh, take take control of the water for whatever it is that they want to do, you know, a long time ago, and I said long like that for, for a particular reason. A long time ago, uh, there was a problem in some countries because, uh, like Coca Cola, one time down there in the country of Colombia, uh, Coca Cola had took control of a. Uh, some, some of the water, the rivers and stuff down there, and they paid, and so the government got some money from Coca-Cola, and Coca-Cola was using the water primarily to make Coca-Cola, and what yeah. was left, whether it was messed up or whatever, yeah, was left they it. for the folks <laughs> to deal with and to figure out what they can do to yep. stay with it. After and they so polluted they, it, they abandoned yep. it. That's what corporations yep. do. Absolutely. Yep. And the, yeah, and the, the same country. same thing that we're dealing with here in regards to who's controlling the water decides how we get it in our communities and stuff. And yeah. so in some countries that aren't as urbanized as the United States, uh, then you, they have even more problems and stuff because mm -hmm. they might be more rural or more whatever, but it's harder for them to get the water, you know, unless they right there on the water. And, you know, and that's done intentionally. And, yeah. then, you know, and it's not it's not done in a way that people tell everybody how it's going on. It's sort of like uh, Detroit doing the COVID uh, thing here, where our mayor and our governor of Michigan and stuff and the mayor of the city of Detroit, they was acting like they was really uh, trying to help the citizens out and, st and stay healthy and stuff. Uh -huh. And we had thousands of people whose water was cut off. 
whole and they neighborhood. Didn't have access to the water, you know. Absolutely. And so a lot of folks dealing with those same kind of issues. It might not be exactly the same because our houses might not be exactly the same or the land might not be exactly the same. But we're dealing with the same issues in regards to uh, those people who making money and those people who are, I, start, I was talking about making money to corporations. But then I was thinking, those politicians making money too because the darn corporations oh, yes, be paying off, paying off the politicians so that they can run and do good things. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. I, and I got to say one thing that I learned from Al Gore. I know it sounds like I'm an Al Gore fan, but I was surprised <laughs> that he was acting as crazy as me over there. But I learned some uh, facts from him that I, I've been to three cop meetings. I went, uh, uh, the, uh, three years ago, I went to cop that was in uh, in Scotland, Glasgow, Scotland. Remember. Last year, I went to uh, Egypt. And this year, I went to Dubai. And the one thing that he he, he, he shared with folks that a lot of folks uh, like me that was over there because we organized and wanted to see some change, uh, we was trying, we was listening to and like, is he told us that uh, three years ago uh, and last year, the majority of people there were representatives from corporations and the countries. Uh -huh. And that they, they, because they are in the majority, then they, they began to push back stuff that we want to be discussing and trying to figure out how we can move forward on it. And, and they also uh, have something to say about, you know, because the countries get to make a decisions, you know, just like in the UN, they have discussions and they make something. So everybody thought that based on what was going on, that we was going to end up with uh, the fossil, uh, we're going to stop digging all in the ground and getting all that <laughs> fossil mess out and stuff. But yeah. Uh, the discussions was going on pretty good. And then when it started getting toward the end, our COP28, then uh -huh. we found out that we didn't have the, uh, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't have the people we needed to be saying and voting on the things that they needed to. So we ended up in a situation where uh, that did not come through. Uh -huh. and, I, and I'm not surprised because yeah. like I said, uh, even though Dubai might be one of the richest places in, in, in the world, uh, that is supported by a lot of the Western countries and then some of the other countries that we like to think are more progressive or whatever, uh, they might not have uh, 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 stood up like they should have, mm. you know, and, and, and raised more hell, you know, about what's Discussion. happening. Because what's yeah. going to happen is going to happen to all of us, whether yeah. we're, no matter what country we come from, no matter what race we are, no matter no matter what. We all gonna be suffering from the same damn thing, so that we got to figure out how to come together and make some decisions that might not be what we want to say, but it's got to be about what we need to do so that the earth continues to stay here and that uh, uh, the future of our children and grandchildren and stuff will have a life to live, you know, uh, unlike what some people are having to deal with already. Yeah, you know, right. And so when we think about people that, people all that over we, the world in serious situations because of yeah. climate, food, war, mm -hmm. all of the things. Yeah, and some of those right. people yeah. who understand what the issues are, what we're talking about, uh, they're just like here in the United States. And so where the, where the uh, corporations decide to give a little money to the politicians who they know will help them take care of whatever they got to take care of, no matter who they are, whether they're Democrats, Republicans, or whatever. You know, yeah. and so we got to deal with that. We got to figure out how we can uh, connect with folks all over the world and help them begin to figure out how we communicate more broadly with everybody, how we debate with those folks who don't necessarily fully understand us or don't agree with us. Uh, but we have to do that in such a way that sure. we can begin to build the kind of power we need to force these uh, politicians in these countries to do what they need to do, you wow. know, because I don't know what our leaders are thinking about, but you uh, know, if, if we're I, gonna be, be dying off because of uh, uh, the air, because of the water and because of the other kinds of things that climate and, and environment has, has to do with how we live and what we can do, then they're gonna be affected too. We're not gonna be the yeah. only ones that get sick, our health get messed up and we end up dying. They're gonna end up dying too. 
Okay. Right. I mean, I it's like understand. they shoot themselves in the foot and they're, and, uh, you know, the things that they care about the most, right. Their, their families and their legacies and things like that. For, for some reason, they think that they're shielded from these things and they're simply not. Mm-hmm. Did anybody mm-hmm. see the videos coming out of California the last couple of days? The water looked flipping mad. I mean, there is these huge swells like uh, up, up against the coast and people are that are just totally uh, just unheard of. They, people are like taking these these videos just shocked at. But the water looks flipping mad and I don't blame it. I'm flipping mad. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Like I don't blame the water for being mad. <laughs> and it looked like that. Those video, the videos coming out from California the last couple of days to look like that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And it's not just California. There are things happening in different places all around the United yeah. States. Whether it's yeah. all that mud that showed up in one area of the country <laughs> and stuff. And so there's a lot of stuff that we just need to straighten up, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and try, to, try to get better. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the kinds of things that we are doing are some of the stuff we don't need to be doing, you mm. know. A good uh, majority and, of it, to be fair. <laughs> a good majority of it. The thing is, it's like when we talk about, like, we're going to have to get used to using less. There's just, you know, like us being able to use all of this electricity and all of these resources and things that we're accustomed to, we just simply aren't going to be able to do anymore. And those, they, and it's something that a whole society has to do, right? Mm-hmm. It's not something one person can do and it make a difference or even just a small amount of people. It really is a whole society that has to decide we're going to save ourselves and we're going to save our planet. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And we're going to we we're going to create something beautiful for seven generations ahead and think about our grandchildren and and all of that. And water, one thing about water that I want to uh, share uh before we finish or whatever is you know, uh the water that we need to drink cuz you can't live without water. But at the same time, uh there might be differences in what's wrong with the water. But uh, around the country, but the same thing is, is is everybody's trying to figure out how can you clean up the water and uh, make things better for us. But at the same time, uh, the folks who who most want to clean up the water, they don't have the uh, the money and they don't have the access to the kinds of uh, 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 tools and instruments that might help yeah. them. And the yeah. people who do have them, they don't want to share that. And the no. other thing is that they're good at telling us stories that we began to think stuff, and uh, those stories aren't truly real. We ran yeah. into one guy that we was talking to, and he was he was born over there and lived there. He was amazing in terms of how he was talking and stuff. And so then we started laughing uh, because we were talking about what was happening. And so I asked him, I said, I say, well, where you go to school? And he said, oh, he said, I went to school in Berkeley, in California. I said, in the United States? And he said, yes. And then the person who was with me, uh, brother named Brother Daoud, Brother Daoud said, oh, my God, you speak better English than me. I mean, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, and he was just that good, you know? So over there, they do like we do sometimes, that we put the person who we think best can communicate. And so he was communicating and making people think that they were doing good stuff uh, to make the uh, water and make the air and everything else Those better. Corporations lie, but but that but that was just uh, that was just uh, amazing. You know, that's yeah. It was just amazing what he said uh, and what you <laughs> thought time, he was man. talking about. And if you ask him some questions, he could answer the question, and you'd be sitting back saying, "Oh, by the time you figure out what he said, you'd be saying, oh, my God, that's not true.'" But oh, yeah. it, sounded, it sounded so good. You were sitting back smiling and said, oh, my God, he is a genius, ain't he? He's a straight but, con man. <laughs> telling you lies. He's a, he's a good These con man. These corporations lie. They yeah, lie. Yeah, These yeah, politicians yeah. lie. And one other thing I want to say about Dubai. Dubai is an unbelievable uh, playground for people in the world. Sometimes uh, we create uh, places for people to come and uh and have fun and do what they got to do uh it's like a a, a big 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 las vegas over there mm. uh, even though i didn't see no gambling and stuff but they have the largest mall in the world mm. yes 
And they have uh, the high, a building that largest mall in the world. You can take the elevator up to the 124th floor and it gets there in 60 seconds. Now, when you think about some things like that, then you began to figure out why so many people from around the world, from all kinds of countries, whether we're talking about uh, China, whether well, we're talking about some of the uh, socialist countries, or uh, whether we're talking about all the Western countries, folks that uh, got a little bit of money, they go in there and hanging out because they got so much stuff to go over there and you can do uh, that you can go over there and do that. And a lot of times that keep people from thinking about what's really going on in yeah. the area that they live on. And yeah. so we, uh -huh. we went to a couple of communities by mistake because uh, we had to get a, a, you know, jump in the cab like thing. You know, we don't call that that. But we jumped in there and they, they got the address mixed up and we ended up in the hood. And in the hood, uh, they don't have any homelessness over there like we have and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that's how much money they have. But at the same time, if you two and me decided to go over there and work based on what some skills that we have, we'd make more money than we make over here mm. and stuff. Uh, but we wouldn't be making the kind of contributions to changing the world that we'd like to see based on our advocacy and our organizing. And That's so right. we need to understand that because sometimes when you got places like that that show off all, all the all the stuff that you can uh, play in and yeah. and, 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 and party with and do all that stuff, you get sidetracked and yeah. you don't get end up paint, dealing with the real issues that no. you need to deal with to make life better for you and to create a future for our children, grandchildren, and the other. Yeah. I hope I didn't sound too crazy. But no, you don't. I, lo I love that biggest mall in the world, though. They had, they had, they had, uh, they had donuts there for me. You know, Krispy Kreme was there. When I seen Krispy Kreme, everybody was saying, "Baba, you all right?" I was saying, "Krispy Kreme," you know, because I, I had been talking trash about capitalism and all that other stuff. But once I saw Krispy Kreme, saw donuts. Oh, no, you, it didn't make no difference about where we were. <laughs> they were, they were fantastically delicious, too. Well, good. <laughs> but they better have been after you had to go all the way to Dubai to be happy about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you so much um, for going and for uh, coming back and telling us about it um, and in kind of really paying attention to all of the, the nuances of it, right, and the things that... Um, that that needed to be paid attention to and and you and thank you for sharing it with us and our listeners we really appreciate you we always oh, you know i love y'all <laughs> we love you too we absolutely you do and so um much. yeah and the work that you do is always giving me so much hope you've always worked with children and um you're always very real with them and uh and i've you know i've always appreciated your work thank you yeah. <laughs> i appreciate thank you, you. <laughs> and to our listeners out there, um, it's a new year. Uh, may may this year we uh, we make great strides in. Um, we're, maybe we're able to shut down line five this year, and yes. uh, you know alleviate some of the the harm that people um, are going through. I'm looking forward to creating large networks of mutual aid and things like that. Um, in the coming year so that we can, whatever we do face, uh, we can face it together. That's what, um, that's the only way we're going to get, get out of this alive, I think. Uh, yeah. um, Nicole, thank you for always going on this journey with me. Um, and to our listeners, thank you for the support. It's a new year. Let's get into it and save the water. Yeah. Um, until next time, try to take care of each other and try to stay afloat. Bye. Bye. Be careful, homie, you're spilling it.